On this episode of Finding Beautiful Strangers, I got it up and running. I got a gig. We can go backstage. I will have a camera crew. I have an editor. I'm going to find the technology. We are going to be the first company to launch the first content commerce play on the internet. Are you in? Finding Beautiful Strangers is my adventure as a serial entrepreneur and how the people I meet along the way make it possible. It's not a job. It's a lifestyle. I'm Abby Wallach, and it's my story. When I started my fragrance innovation company, Scent Invent, I had an idea. This is about eight, nine years ago. I had a very dear friend, Caroline, in the beauty industry. She worked at Clarins, Prada, Lancome. And one day I was at her house and I saw something going on under her garage. And I said, what is happening in that garage? She's like, I don't actually know. There's some oil cans in there. Well, I am a very curious person. So I started digging in and asking questions. And what's the oil? And what's it for? And we just had this whole conversation. She said her late husband had this scent marketing business. And I was like, that's kind of cool. Tell me more. Because I am always looking for interesting businesses, whether to launch them or be involved in them or, you know, that's how I roll. A few weeks later, I started creating this vision in my head. Wouldn't it be cool if we could create fragrance like candy? The sugar fina of fragrance, little bits of fragrance that were colorful or cool. Because she was a beauty industry executive, she was the person that I was going to talk to about it because I was so interested in what was happening in her garage. I said to Caroline, come to my kitchen. I have an idea. And I literally took out every palette from the Chantecais to Bobby Brown to, I don't know, Dior to everyone under the sun. And I put them on the table and I started playing like I used to do when I was a kid at my grandmother's vanity. And I started showing her things that wouldn't this be fun and wouldn't this be cool and what if we could reimagine and what if we could be in fragrance and really think about how the future of fragrance evolves and how consumers would experience it in a store and buy it more importantly on .com. And she thought that was a great idea. She was like, I love that. She's like, I actually happen to have a chemist. I'm like, you do? She's like, yeah, let's go meet him. So I said, okay, cool. So Caroline and I were off to meet the chemist and to dig in to see if there was a real opportunity to reimagine and reinvent the fragrance business. But where I originally met Caroline was in my very early years in the beauty industry. I had built a business called Beautiful Stranger. There was something about the magic of the name Beautiful Stranger. It was a name someone came up with as part of one of my first media companies. And that company was called Andy and Max Productions. It was supposed to be one of the first digital production companies that would create media and content for the internet. When I started that company, it was backed by an awesome guy. His name was Mark Patrikoff. And I had a partner. My partner's name was Melissa Fedor. She was the beauty editor at InStyle magazine back in the day. And she was my partner in Beautiful Stranger. And Melissa and I met in the very early years of living in New York City and having our first children. And here's how it all went down. I lived on 86th Street, and so did she. We lived near Carl Schultz Park. We had two little boys, and we would go to the park and sit in the sandbox. I hated the sandbox. I didn't want to sit in the park. I didn't want to be doing this, but I was doing it because I just had a baby. And I see this absolutely stunning, gorgeous Shiksa girl with her beautiful blonde-headed boy. And all I want to know is, who is this girl? What does she do? Where is she from? And that is like typical Abby fashion. You know, I see someone. I'm interested. They're kind of cool. I want to know more. Fortunately, in that moment, her son started talking to my son. They were, I think they were one. They were playing with a truck. Who knows? But we started talking. And sure enough, I find out she's in the beauty industry. 
She's an editor at InStyle Magazine, and she had recently left and is editor-at-large and is consulting on projects, and she knows everyone I've ever wanted to know or meet in that industry. She starts to ask me questions. She asks me questions about myself and what do I do and where am I from and what business am I in? And I tell her that I'm in the media business and I was at Showtime and I was at the Nederlanders and now I'm going on my own to launch my own production company and have my own projects after these many years now that I have a child. And I was headed out to L.A., and she was headed back to the apartment, and I knew that I was leaving to go out for the next six months, and I said, I'll get in touch when I return. And that was the beginning of our relationship, and Melissa and I set out to create the first makeover show that you could shop off of. That's actually how it all began, way before Beautiful Stranger. We had this vision, and the vision was, if you can make over someone in a magazine, you can make them over in a video or in a TV show. It's the number one featured article in every beauty magazine. So I thought that was really interesting that she shared that with me. So we decide together that we're going to create a show. It's called Personal Style, and it's about how to make over any aspect of your life. And we develop this show, and we go start to work with everyone in the beauty industry. We start to gather all of the coolest people, from Frederick Fakai to Olivia Shantakai, Sylvie, just all of these celebrity experts, and we create this show, and we try to sell it. We sold it to VH1, and then everyone at VH1 ends up getting fired. So we're in the middle of pre-production on this show, and of course, it doesn't happen because everybody leaves. So we were kind of disappointed, but we, we weren't going to let that stand in our way. So going really far back in time, Melissa and I decide that we're going to launch this show on the Internet. The Internet's just starting. You know, it's like, what's the Internet? I mean, it's been there for a long time, but nobody's really utilizing it. And there's really no value there, and there's definitely not a lot of content. It was more store-oriented. So Melissa and I find this awesome guy. His name is Tony, and Tony has a small shop downtown in the Meat District. There is nothing except a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. No kidding. There is nothing there except for this little shop, a bagel shop, and these cool, like, cobblestone streets— and nothing. So we start going downtown and we start developing this cool idea and it's going to go on the internet. We're doing photo shoots on rooftops and pulling all the in-style connections in the mix to produce great content and writing. And we get this powered up. And it was at that juncture that someone introduced us to Mark Patrickoff, who was going to take on this new internet business. But there was a bigger one that was happening underway. But it wasn't happening that way for us. And we ended up pivoting to be a production studio with KPE. It was this small investment firm. We were going to produce great content for the internet. And it was a very exciting moment. But at that time, the internet bubble was bursting. And we couldn't make a go of it. It was really a huge disappointment. Melissa and I put so much time and energy and excitement and people and beauty industry experts and celebrity experts. And everybody was excited about being a part of this venture. But it just wasn't the right time. When I get through to this and I can take it in. Quite frankly, it was devastating because it was, you know, something that we had invested a lot of time and effort and money. And I always said to Melissa, let's not give up, but let's see where it goes. And maybe one day we'll bring it back. And one thing an entrepreneur does and a producer does and someone like myself does is we always reach back into our toolbox and into our past projects to see what is relevant for the future. Because someone once told me the story about Forrest Gump. It took like 15 years to make that movie, Rest My Case. Life is like a box of chocolates. It totally is. And you never know what you're going to get. So I suppose subscribe to that. And I always believe that if something was truly brilliant, there will always be a time and a place for it. Maybe not exactly how you think it will be, but in some way, somehow come to life in a new iteration. So fast forward a few years later, I was doing a few gigs. I was actually working for my husband, the plastic surgeon in his office, but I think he wanted to fire me too. I'm kidding. That's a joke. He didn't want to fire me. But 
I had the burning desire that I had to be back in media. And this cool piece of content called Beautiful Stranger that we developed as part of that production studio, really about a stylish soul who we wanted to know more about. It was about two girls Andy and Max, who would literally go out on the street with the camera crew, style stalk people that had a great look, a vibe, a vision, a voice, a cool hairdo. They would walk by us. They would smell delicious because the sillage of perfume would leave a trail. They would really capture us in a way. And what Melissa taught me, and Melissa is like my soulmate. She always says, Abby can color red, I'll color blue, and it comes out yellow. We, together, for 17 years, worked tirelessly to bring innovation and cool businesses to market in media, connecting content and commerce. But going back to the original Beautiful Stranger, it really was that simple. It was like what Bill Cunningham used to do on the street on his bicycle. He would go out and just shoot, you know, people that had a sense of style. And what we did together was we looked at these people through the lens of an editor, and we would literally style stalk them, pull them into our cars, drill them down, make them tell us every single thing they were using, wearing, and loving. And then on top of that, we would make them shoppable. So that was the premise of Beautiful Stranger and how it all started. And what happened between Melissa and I was that she was an expert in media and editorial. And I was an expert in television and production and packaging and pitching. And together, we merged our respective knowledge and industries to create this brand that would really, really be one of the very first digital media brands that would set the stage for what the future is now, literally. Take me back to Manhattan, back to the city where the magic happens. You wear your suit and tie and I will wear my satin. We were the OG of influence on the street. We were the people who found the bloggers before anyone even knew who they were. I'll never forget. I was in a room in Chinatown, and there was so many fabulous-looking people, and they were bloggers. And what was a blogger? And then we stalked them, and we found them, and we put them on you know, the internet. And they were already there, but they weren't in the mainstream because, interestingly enough, most of them were from different parts of the country or different parts of the world. They weren't, you know, New York people like we knew it. So this was a very interesting moment in my journey as an entrepreneur. And sometimes you have to start something one, two, or three times to actually bring it to the market. And that's what happened with Beautiful Stranger. We had two runs before it actually launched. We had our makeover show. Then we had our dot com which was just a typical store with content, which never launched. And then we had our production company, which never actually came to fruition. And then finally, about five years later, I said to Melissa, I have a partner now. He's out of IMG. He has a small studio. And my very dear friend, Elisa Bromer, she ran Donna Karen. And at this time, she was running Vivian Tam. She invited me to the show. And I said, you know, I'd much rather come behind the scenes with a camera. I'm not really big sitting front row. It's much more fun for me. I'm a kind of behind the scenes girl as a producer. What Would that be okay? She's like, of course, do whatever you want. So the door opened and I flew it wide, right? I was like, this is it. I'm taking that camera crew and I am going backstage. I'm going to hit the ground running. I'll launch this thing no matter what it takes because it's been so many years. I call Melissa. I say, meet at our favorite spot. It was La Pan Quotidian on 84th Street in Madison. We literally, like, opened that restaurant and sat there for years coming up with creative ideas. And we met at our favorite spot, and we had our favorite sandwich. I looked at her, and I said, listen, I got it up and running. I got a gig. We can go backstage at Vivian Tam's fashion show in Bryant Park. I will have a camera crew. I have an editor. I'm going to find the technology. We are going to be the first company to launch Beautiful Stranger as the very first content commerce play on the internet. Are you in? In the next episode, from backstage at fashion shows to the front row of city streets, a vision and dream is actualized, launching to millions, plus a deal that could have changed the future and the phone call that shattered 
everything. Don't be a stranger. Find me at abby.wallach on Instagram. And if you want to learn more about my projects and the things that I've done, check it out, abbywallach.com. This podcast is produced and edited by Mark Rako. Copyright 2022, Abby Wallach Productions. <laughs> 